Hey, welcome. In this lecture, we are going to be able to retrieve and display our categories from the Cloud Fire Store database. Okay, now to do this, we are going to be using the Flutter Fire documentation. Now, what you have to do is to open a new tab, and over here, we are then going to search for Flutter Fire. And you can see we have this first link over here, which says firebase.flutter.dev. Click on it, and within the search input, we are then going to search for one time read. And basically, we have two popular or two major ways of retrieving data. And one of them is the future builder, and the second is the stream builder. But what we want is immediately we upload a new category we want to be able to display them real time over here and to do this we have to use the stream builder and the reason for this is because whenever we upload or whenever we have a new category we want to display them real time you can see the stream builder as your one-to-one -one chat whenever you send a message to a user the user immediately gets it real time so that is why we want to use the stream builder now head back to your browser and first of all we can just create a file for this and within the sidebar screens we can create a new folder first of all and we can call this folder widget and then within the widget folder we can then create a file and we can call this category underscore widget dot dot it's not really a new screen because we're going to have it displayed under the categories screen and now we can create a stateless widget and since we can update it to a stateful widget if there is any need to do so category and sorry category and widget and over here you need to alight and use control and dot in order to import the material to that package and what we can then do is we can scroll down and also you can see we have other ways of displaying data i think we've used this before to display our banner okay and over here we can copy right from this stream builder and down to the spot ctrl and c to copy and back to vs code and instead of having this container we can get rid of this and paste this instead and now we have to import the cloud file store package Alight and use control and dot in order to import the cloud file store package control and b to make this wide and over here you can see we have the stream and it is basically referring to the source of the data we want to retrieve now go back to your browser and you can see we already have this over here so we can just copy this okay and back and we can paste this right over here and basically it is referring to the users collection and we do not want to fetch any user from the users collection but we want to fetch our categories from the categories collection great and also we can rename this to categories categories and copy this and paste it over here. Great. And over here, it is basically saying if it is trying to fetch the data, we want to show a test which is going to say loading. But what we can do is we can get rid of this test instead. And over here, we can use a center widget to center the next widget we're going to be using. And we can then have a child. And within the child, we're going to have a secular progress indicator as its value and also within the secular progress indicator it has a property known as color and we can then set this to colors the sign okay sorry great and if it is trying to fetch the categories we want to show this secular progress indicator to tell ourselves because we are the admin 
to tell ourselves that something's currently going on and we have to wait till it finished freshing the data. And over here, you can see we basically have a variable to store called data and this will basically store and this will basically store the data we have within our cloud firestore database well what we want to do is we want to make our life much more easier so we can get rid of this data we can get rid of this list view and create a variable to store our own data okay now what we want to do first of all is over here Immediately we upload a new category and currently we have just one category. What we want to do is we want to have them displayed um, horizontally. Okay, I'm just going to show you this. Okay, and uh, this and okay. And, and categories. Okay, you can see they are being displayed horizontally when we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six in each of the rows. Sounds good. And this is basically what we want to achieve. To do this, we are going to be using a widget known as grid view. Grid. Grid. View dot builder. And you can see the grid view the builder has a property known as a grid delegate. For this grid delegate, it is something known as silver silver grid silver grid delegate with cross axis count. And within the silver grid delegates with cross axis count. It has a property known as cross access count. And this cross access count is basically referring to how many categories we need in each row. And you can see over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six category in each row. And also we can just say maybe we need two category. We need two category in each row. And that is going to be just one, two. And if you upload on there, it's going to be one, two but we currently need six but you can just go with maybe seven or any other uh, rows you need and we need six we need six category for each rows and also within that it has a property known as main access spacing which has to do with the space we need vert uh, vertically and for this we can say we need it it also has a property known as cross axis spacing which is basically referring to the space we need horizontally and we can also say eight okay and now it has a property known as item builder which is basically referring to how we want to display that data that fetch data and basically the item builder we take into values or two properties known as contest and indents the indents is basically referring to each item each category we have or each item we have and over here we can then have this and also within the grid view the builder it also do has a property known as item count the item count is basically referring to how many data in general we have in our database or in our cloud faster database and you can see currently we have just one data or we have just one category okay and to get that we have to say snapshot you can see the snapshot as a variable that has access to all the data we have in our database you can see we have this the snapshot over here okay snapshot dot data and the size this is going to give us how many data we have and over here we need a no check width and one other property we also do need to pass is a property or well, first of all we can just 
go ahead with this. And now we want to return. We want to return. We can return the column. The column widget. Okay, and children. And first of all, we want to display our image, right? So what we can do is we can use a size box to give a height and a width to the image size box and you can give this a height height of maybe 100 and also width of width 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 not up to predicting for me width of 100 and now we can have a child a child this is going to be image dot network and now what we can do is we can create a variable to store our data now before this return we can create a final variable and we can call this category data and to do this we then have to say snapshot remember i said this you can see that snapshot as a variable that has access to all the data we have within the cloud file store so we can then say snapshot dot data then we want to access the document for shots we can say docs and we want to assess each of the item we have in our database by their indents okay had a not check over here and now over here we then have to call the category category data variable and the field we want to assess is the image i think we call this image or probably you call yours category image and now we want to then display our category name okay and now we can have the first widget and this is going to be sorry this is going to be category category data and we call this category name and this is basically it and hopefully you understand all this but if you don't you can please do well to let me know and most of the time you just have to do this up to three to four times in order, in order for it to get used to you and use control next to save and what we then have to do is head back to the categories screen and within the column right after the pattern first of all we can have a trail comma and then we can call the category category widget category i think we call this category or what did we call this let's gonna check quickly yeah we did okay sorry this is gonna use uh control and d to a light similar and change it to category widget Okay, category widget, and we need to import and use Ctrl S now to save. And it's going to take some time, and we have to wait for this. Okay, it's done. And back to our browser and categories. Hmm, nothing is going. Okay, and okay, we we did not save this file. Use Ctrl S now to save. And yeah, for sure it's gonna take some time. Not as much. Okay. Wait for this. And hopefully you understand all this. But if you don't, it is still normal. But as the process goes, you're definitely going to understand everything. Okay. Okay. And let's go check this out. Okay. Loading. Mm, categories. And you can see it's trying to fetch the data. So we have this loading spinner. And nothing happened. And let's go check our terminal to see what's going on there.
Okay, I'm just gonna hot restart this. Hot restart this. Okay, and lastly, we have to do something within the cat. Sorry, within the category widget. Over here, we then have to set a property to to true, and it is known as string wrap. We can then set this to true. In the future, I'm going to explain what this is to you. Okay, for the now, we can just use Ctrl and S to save, and everything is going to work as expected now. And categories, and you can see some score. And for now, the image is not going to be displayed because in order to do this, we also do need to do something. But in the next lecture, we're going to do that. But currently, you can see we have our categories displayed. And now we can upload a new category. And remember, we are using the stream builder, so it's going to display real time. And this is basically for test purpose. In the future, I'm going to delete this. And we can just call this egg. Egg and save. And you're going to see it real time over here. Sounds cool. Working as expected. You can see we have this egg. Sounds good, right? And hopefully you understand all this, but if you don't, please do well to let me know. And I'm fully available to support you and answer all your doubts in no time.